Before I begin this video, I want you to know that this is not a video that will be for game developers. If you are a game developer, this is not the video for you. You should turn it off. All right, now, again, one more disclaimer over here. This is not going to be a video about what's been working well in the past. This is about the future. It's about you choosing a language, learning it, maybe choosing two or three of, of these languages, learning it, and then going on in the industry and creating a career for yourself. It's based on that. It's based on the fact that you should be able to get jobs and jobs in good companies even if they start today, companies that start tomorrow, they will be using these languages, not the companies of the past. So we're not really talking about the past over here. With that out of the picture, we're gonna begin and I'm gonna be telling you about the top three programming languages that I believe you should spend time learning in 2021. If you stick till the end of this video, I will also tell you my favorite programming languages some of the frameworks, libraries, whatever you want to call it. Number one, I believe, and this is something that you need to know if you're a software developer, I think most developers would agree with me on this, is JavaScript. And this is so well integrated in the applications, in the businesses of today, that there's literally no escaping it for most people, all right? JavaScript can be used for building the front end and the back end, both of these of web applications. Secondly, JavaScript can also be used to build mobile applications. You may have heard of frameworks and libraries like AngularJS, ReactJS. These things come into the picture and they are very, very popular nowadays. In fact, ReactJS can be used to build native applications for your mobiles using JavaScript, both iOS and Android. So there's a lot of potential in this language and I feel that you should definitely not skip out on JavaScript. And once you study JavaScript, there's really no turning back. You go on to advanced and advanced frameworks. There's libraries that you can study and that's a lot of, you know, there's, there's a lot of potential in this field, a lot of jobs that you will be able to see. All right, the top companies using JavaScript, and I, I feel that there's probably no company that doesn't use JavaScript at all. <laughs> of course, in the tech space at least, but the top companies are Microsoft, PayPal, Netflix, Facebook and Google. So all of these companies are already using JavaScript and you know there's plenty of other companies and I feel that almost every startup, every company that is building their own website, they're all already on JavaScript in some way or the other. Number two is Python and this is also one of my favorite languages because number one it can be used to build amazing backends if you're interested in building web applications. Secondly, it can also be used for desktop applications, but really what, where it really takes away from the other languages is that it's really the easiest to learn. If you are just starting out and you do not have any experience with you know, the elementary languages, C, C++, you can really save yourself a lot of time by just studying Python because most companies nowadays don't really get into the complexity of pointers. They don't really need to go in there. So most of them just rely on Python, which kind of just abstracts away from these concepts. Secondly, if you want to do anything in Python, there will be amazing community support. You will find a lot of community support on Stack Overflow, GitHub, other websites online, and you will be able to probably find the solution to your problems online just by doing a quick Google search if you know what you're doing, all right? And finally, the most amazing thing about it is no matter what you want to do, you want to do research in biotechnology, you will have a package in Python. You want to do something with PayPal, you will have a wrapper in Python. You want to do something with building a website, you will have amazing frameworks like Django. If you want to do something about searching about satellites or working with NASA, I know that they are also using Python and they have amazing libraries that you can use too. So there's almost everything you do, everything you want to do, some library, some wrapper, some package will always be available for you in Python. And of course, the data science people are not really, you know, unfamiliar with this already. So yeah, the top companies using Python today are Google, Facebook, Spotify, Instagram, and Quora. And what I'll tell you about the Instagram st stack a little bit and why I really like it as well at the end of this video. Okay, so the number three programming language over here, and that, by the way, I, I actually compared a lot of these just to put the number three one over here because there's only three in, in this video and they, they could have been Java, they could have been Kotlin, but I'm putting in Swift over here. And the reason is because Java is really, you know, the new companies are not going to be working on Java a lot. You can see new startups, they don't really prefer working on Java usually. Older companies, which are really, really big right now, they already use Java. Yes, that is true. And most of it is because it's really hard for them to start their code base in another language now because everything else that they have developed is already in Java. So usually big companies who are not really able to change their stack right now, 
They're on Java. New startups, not so much. They're using Kotlin, but then Kotlin is still a recent language and you know there's not a lot of support for it. And at the same time, half of the people who want to work on Android and you know all of these things are working on Java, half of them are on Kotlin. So the jobs are definitely a little bit lesser. Whereas if you talk about Swift, it's, it's re really, it's also a recent language and it's a lot more established right now. So you can use Swift to develop iOS applications and MacBook applications, almost everything that Apple develops. You know, Apple Watches, you can develop applications for it on Swift, all right? And I'm gonna give you an amazing example of this when, when we talk about the companies. But the key takeaways are Swift, number one, it's very easy to learn. I, I, I Personally, I compare it with Python. It's very easy to learn. And secondly, it's got a lot of jobs. There's no dearth of jobs over there. So definitely, you know, consider learning Swift if you're interested in developing applications for iOS and MacBooks. Apple, of course, is not disappearing anytime soon. So you will have plenty of jobs over there as well. Now, the top companies that use Swift are Uber, Slack, Lyft, and Robinhood. Now, the most important bit over here I want to tell you about is Lyft actually had their iOS application already. I believe it was in Objective-C, but then they moved it completely to Swift and they actually wrote a blog about it as well. So Lyft actually moved their complete application for the iOS on, on Swift as soon as Apple launched the language and there was a little bit of community support over there. So definitely consider checking it out. I, I can tell you that there's a lot of potential in this as, as well. So coming on to my favorite languages, Again, I, I'll tell you the ones that I personally use on a daily basis because those are the ones which are my favorite. Um, I would say they have to be number one and number two, JavaScript and Python. Because personally, we're using very, very similar stack at YMGrad that Instagram uses. Earlier, the whole website was in Django. Then we really wanted to build something f for the phone applications as well, right? We would have to code everything from scratch. So what we did was we instead moved from Django. You know, we're still using Django, of course, but we're using it in the form of an API. And now we're using React.js with Django, which of course is also what Instagram is doing. And now with that, what we're able to do is we're able to use React Native to create native applications for both Android and iOS. So currently we're doing that. So there's a lot of potential with these latest frameworks, a lot of things going on. And I think it's a very exciting world to be in today. If you're interested in developing applications, programs that other people use, and trust me, it gives you a next level of excitement when other people start using your application, right? So go ahead, don't go ahead checking out more videos on this topic, checking out which programming language is the right for you. I've given you the top three, I've given you the ones which you can use to build your future, to build a career with. And you should definitely consider start learning these and as soon as possible, start building some projects. Go ahead, get some internships if you, do, if you don't really have any experience. And with that, you'll be able to go ahead and take, a, take up a job in the next six to seven months itself if you really, really focus on just one or two languages as well. You don't have to do all of them, trust me. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you like this video. If you're interested in connecting with me, do so over my Instagram and subscribe to the channel if you like the efforts that I'm putting in. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye and take care.